Okay, on the agenda today is I have an old 1986 S-Series International dump truck and I'm having issues with the fuel shut off solenoid. Not so much that, I don't know, there's a couple issues. It's basically a 12 volt system. I don't, we'll check to see if it's actually getting 12 volts. Um, you can override it and then it'll work just fine. The only bad part about that is you can't turn the key off to shut it off you turn the key off to kill all the power it'll still run until you go back in there to the solenoid and back out the thumb screw as the override so what i'm going to do today is go down there uh, we'll see if it fires up by just turning the key on if not then we'll hit the override and we'll get it moved into the shop and figure out what's wrong with it that uh gotta check the hub on it as well so it's been a little while since i fired this thing up so Hopefully it'll fire up. All right, there she is. Let's get the hood popped. All right, that's pretty good vis visibility in there. So this right here is the fuel shut off solenoid. I've replaced it one other time and the wire that runs to it is back there this right here it's supposed to supply 12 volts to it and what it does is it acts like a magnet so there's a little diaphragm in here that gets pulled back when there's 12 volts applied to it that allows the fuel to flow through as you can see right here this fuel that goes up into uh, the rails that it needs to to get fuel to fire this beast up and when you can't when the 12 volts doesn't work, you can see right above my finger there, there's a thumb screw that turns in, it screws in and it moves that diaphragm out of the way. So it's just a manual override. So first off, what we'll do is we'll get into the truck and see if it just turns over on its own, put some power to it. Maybe it works. Because before it was working intermittently, Climb up here. All right, make sure it's in neutral. Key goes down here. Uh, powers on. And then hit this button in order to see if it starts. So here we go. Yep. No dice. So what I'll do is I'll jump down here, turn that thumb screw in, like so. Bottom it all the way out, and then back it off just a little bit. So I found that if you bottom it all the way out, and then when it fires up, it, it's hard to back that thing out. Key on, power on. Let's try it again. There we go. We've got power now. All right, well, I think it's got to warm up for a little while and build some air pressure so that I can unlock the brakes. And yeah, then we'll move it into the shop. All right, this is what I mean by it won't shut off. Get up in here, you see the keys, like it goes off, on, off. That's because that fuel shut off solenoid, the thumb screws, it's uh, overridden. So now that we got the key off, if I reach in here and shut the fuel shut off solenoid, There you go, it shuts down. So that's the problem. Uh, if you're inside the truck and you wanna shut it off, you gotta get out, you gotta pull the hood up, unscrew that, it, it's a pain in the butt. So uh, we gotta get in here and figure out if it's just not getting 12 volts or if it just needs to be replaced altogether. If it needs to be replaced altogether, I have the other part, but I'm hoping that it just 
it's not getting 12 volts. If that's the case, then I can go up to the ignition switch, pull 12 volts from somewhere else, and then away we go. So we'll see. Actually, one other thing that I want to try. It's all right. Let's screw this thing back in, do a little bit of diagnostic here. So it's screwed back in. Actually, I want to pull this thing forward a little bit. We'll turn the key back on and then All right, it fires right up. Let's pull this thing forward just a little. Go back that thumb screw out and see if it dies. See, the thumb screw's out now, but the truck's still running. So, what I'm thinking is, what I'm thinking is, it's a it's a delivery issue or not having enough. So again, look, keys on. There you go. So a little bit of diagnostic. Maybe it's actually not the fuel shut off solenoid itself, but maybe it's something to do with the voltage being delivered to it. So we'll dive into that and see if we can't get that figured out. All right. I know it's kind of a pain in the butt to see, but I mean, as far as zooming in purposes, basically where we got to start at is figuring out how much power we're getting to this right here. So realistically, what I'll do is I'll take this wire off the back and then we'll, we'll start from there. We got that disconnected. Now we need to find a good ground. Yep. So we're only getting five volts and that's probably just not gonna cut it. So the only other thing that I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm gonna fire this thing back up I'm gonna see if there's a major voltage change when it's running because it's able to keep that thing going. So yeah, let's try that. So it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's uh, yeah, it's 12 volts when it's running. So that's our major issue. So we just need to get 12 volts to it from the key. And then we don't have to worry about replacing this fuel shutoff solenoid. So that's what we could do. Start by tracing this thing out. See where this wire comes from. And then from there, we can I can assess whether or not it's going to be worth trying to figure out what the issue is there or just rewiring it completely. Just running something from the ignition that goes from a, a dead terminal with the key off to a 12 volt terminal with the key on and then we can rerun the wire completely and just cut this one out of the system. So that's where we will start. Okay, so I went through there, I tried to trace the wire out, it, it's not, it's so intertwined with other wires, it's, it's just kind of not worth it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape that one off, I'm gonna tuck it back up into the, into the wire loom, and I'm just going to pull a completely different circuit that is, has 12, 12 volts to it. When the key's on, we'll run it from the fuse box uh, directly out here to the fuel shutoff solenoid. Go from there. So, here we go. Okay, so first things first, we gotta run the wire through the firewall, route it up and around to where it needs to go, and then we'll cut it first, because I'd rather do that than trying to guess. So, let's see if we can even see up here where this is gonna go. Kinda see right there a little bit. Let's pull a little bit more slack off of this. 
Okay, so you got the wire ran through there. I don't know if you can you'll be able to see. There you go. Right by my finger there. The wire is ran through there. So I ran it all the way up through. And now we have let's see. Now we have a new wire that this is what's gonna go to the fuel shutoff solenoid. So we ran ran it up, ran it up through everything. Uh, there is an accessory hole in the fuse block, so we were able to run it, run this to it. So it's got 12 volts when the key is on, and then no power when the key is off. So that should work for this fuel shutoff solenoid, and we shouldn't. It, it should work with the key now. So we'll get it all hooked up. Uh, double check that this has that this has 12 volts with the key on. We'll get it hooked up, and then we'll test fire it and see if it works. All right, just let on, key is off, no power. Let's go click that key on, bam, 12 volts. All right, let's get that hooked up and test fire this thing. Okay, so what I've run into here a little bit is I can get it to run, uh, I get the, there's 12 volts to get it started, but the problem is, is that when you shut the key off, uh, it keeps running until you pull that wire out of the accessory block. So, I mean, I checked with the uh, voltmeter. It, it doesn't have power when it's off, but it does have power when the key's in the on position, so off position, nothing. On position, 12 volts. But, like I said, it's enough to get it started, but it'll keep running once you shut the key off to the off position, which, in theory, should cut the power to it and then shut the fuel shutoff solenoid off. Now I will pull the ignition the actual switch out of there and then check the back of that to see if there's see if I'm getting power because it should be a, a hot and always hot that goes to that and then you know the switch switches over and powers that, that fuse block that's the theory anyways uh, if that doesn't work then it may be the ignition switch so yeah we'll go from there can't really see me but we're gonna pull this out and then find a hot wire behind that and then try and wire this in. See if it works that way. If not, then we'll just have to put a switch in. So, is what it is. Okay, so you can see right there the one my finger's touching. That is the hot coming in and it is uber corroded. So I'm gonna pull that off there, check a couple of things and we'll go from there. See what happens. Okay, so uh, we've made progress. I pulled the ignition switch apart. I cleaned it up. Well, I didn't pull it apart. I pulled it out. I cleaned it up and we went back through and I found the accessory side and I ran that wire that goes out to the fuel shutoff solenoid directly to that. I was still having the same issues. I turned the key off and it would still run. So what I ended up doing in lieu of See it. So right here, we just re wired in a switch. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but we wired in a switch. Uh, it's where up here on the dash. This was an old county plow truck, so I mean it had the plow lights right here. And so all we did basically that since it doesn't have a plow and it doesn't have lights out there anymore, so what that turned into is now it's your fuel shut off. So we'll have a switch for fuel on and off. Turn your key on, turn your fuel on, fire up, away you go. And the exact opposite, when you come to a stop, shut your fuel off, uh, turn the power off to the rest of it. So that's how we had to do it, not how I wanted to do it, but I exercised all my other options. And this is what I came up with, with what I had here. So, yeah. Okay, moment of truth. See if it works. Key in, key on. We have power. Fuel on. Let's see if it starts. Yeah, it runs. Let's see if it shuts off. There we go. Got her. All right, that part's done. Uh, I'll get everything buttoned up under the hood everything put back together and then we will move on to the hub.
All right, next thing we gotta do is this hub, a little bit milky, so I'm gonna pull it apart. I've changed the oil a few times on it, and then it just keeps coming out milky, so I'm gonna drain it again. Let's see if that, Let's see if we can find the reasoning why. So, nothing crazy that you can see in there as to why it would be, so what we'll do is we'll just wash it out with a brake clean the best we can. So the only thing I can think to do at this point is just flush it out the best we can. Maybe we can get some crap out of there, some water or something, and we'll blow it out with air. And Put it back together, get grease back in it, or excuse me, gear oil. problem before is that you'd put you change out the hub oil and then it would just it go milky instantaneously and I just just think it needed to be cleaned out I mean because if it was leaking water into there you'd figure there'd be oil coming out too so there wasn't it wasn't leaking anywhere well I'm gonna let this one sit and I think I'm gonna go change the oil in the other hub all right, both hubs are changed. I'm gonna end the video here. I appreciate you watching all the way to this point. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, if you wanna see more of the projects that I do, then by all means hit that subscribe button, comment. It always helps me out. Uh, my goal is to get this channel to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. If you'd help me out, I'd really appreciate that. Anyways, I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.